In today's video, we're going to look at the credit card tier system for people focused on cash back. Reminder that there is a chapters tool down below if you want to skip to the next part. Big favor as always is to give this a thumbs up and if you're someone interested in stuff like this, consider subscribing. So why does any of this even matter? The idea is that you're spending money anyways and credit cards are kind of an advanced form of couponing. A bit of me hates this, but credit card rewards are a transfer of wealth from cash users to credit card users. So let's say you go buy some tape and by using your credit card, you end up getting points. The person selling you the tape, that merchant, ends up paying additional fees in order to accept credit cards. Interchange fees are about two to 3%. In most states for most products, these merchants end up charging everyone the same amount of money. So in order to account for the fee, they end up increasing the price of the item. You end up getting something back, but the person paying cash pays the same exact price as you, but they don't get anything back. So per the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston, each person using cash ends up putting $149 into the system every year. On the flip side, for people using credit cards, they're getting $1,133 from the system back every year. Our goal is to figure out how to be on the receiving end of that and to maximize money for purchases that you're doing anyways. Side note for people looking for additional cash back, I'd recommend looking into Rakuten. So they're one of my favorite cash back portals just because they have pretty competitive rates and they're good about tracking and making sure that you actually end up getting paid for your purchases. Rates can change quite a bit from 1% to something like 15% during the holidays. I'll put a referral link down below if you want to check it out and it's one of my favorite services. So starting off of tier 5, we have 1% and 1.5% cards. This is generally the starting point for people who are new to the channel. They know that they need to have something but they're not really too focused on what it is. So they know that they want to build credit, they know that they can get some rewards back, but they haven't really looked too much into this. Generally though, you can get something like 200 or 300% additional value back just by changing your setup. There are some other 1.5x cards that end up giving you more value if you have different setups, but that oftentimes requires you to have a different card that opens the door up for that value. Moving into tier four, this is going to be 2% back cards, and this is what I recommend for people who want to set it and forget it. Basically, you just want one card for everything and you want to keep it very simple. The City Double Cash card, Fidelity 2%, PayPal MasterCard, they all fit the bill along with some other regional credit union cards. This is the baseline value that you're looking for when you're considering cards, and it's that 2% hurdle rate that you want to pass. So of all of these options, I would recommend the City Double Cash card just because it gives you a bit more optionality. One of the really cool things about City is that you can product change between any of their cards, meaning that you can change this Double Cash card into something like the Costco card, which we'll talk about in a second. At the same time, you could also change this into a travel card. And speaking of travel, the 2% that we talk about for the Double Cash is the baseline value. If you end up moving into a travel setup, a City trifecta of sorts, then you're going to get more value from that back. So what I mean by this is 2% is the floor, but if you're interested in doing first and business class flights, that's closer to 4%. Not gonna spend too much time on this because it's not really relevant for cash back people, but know that there's optionality and that's a good thing. Side note, if you're interested in learning more about the double cash card, we have links on our website, asksebi.com, and also down below in the description box. Moving into tier three, these are going to be specialty cards, and this is what I recommend for people who spend a lot of money at specific places. For this, cashback is going to be cashback, so you generally don't have much additional upside, but it is a pretty good floor. Your goal is to find cards that offer at least 3% back, and I would say this breaks down into three different types. So type number one is going to be payment method. If you're someone who has the Apple card, you can get 3% back when you're using Apple Pay with a bunch of different companies. So if you spend a lot of money at Apple or Walgreens, then this can be pretty helpful. The list on the screen is as of January 2021, but I do see them expanding this in the future. For people who need expensive medicine, 3% back at Walgreens can be pretty huge. So type two of all of this is going to be vendor or store cards. The Amazon Prime card is a pretty good example of this where you're going to get 5% back for Amazon as well as for Whole Foods. If you're someone who buys a lot of electronics or camera equipment or lenses and stuff, then B&H is worth considering. So for me, it ends up saving 8.5% because they cover the tax amount. The one thing to be careful with here is to not get a card for somewhere that you're not going to spend either much money on or that you don't see yourself shopping with in the future. So for example, American Eagle has a credit card and I think it's fine if you spend a lot of money there, but most people are probably going to either not spend that much or grow out of American Eagle. End of the day, you want your cards to work for you and to make you money back. The third type is going to be specific categories. So the Costco card gets you 4% back on gas up to $7,000 and also 3% back on travel and restaurants. 
Something like the Capital One Saver card gets you 3% back on dining and entertainment. American Express Blue Cash Every Day, the BCE, gets you 3% back on supermarkets up to $6,000. The benefit here is that you're not locked into a specific store, so you can go to Whole Foods if you want. You can also go to Safeway or Trader Joe's. For a lot of these cards, there's also an annual fee version, so the Blue Cash Every Day and the Blue Cash Preferred. To figure out which one makes more sense for you, I would recommend doing a quick break-even calculation, so where you're trying to solve for X and that's your supermarket spending. Doing the quick math, the break-even point is $3,167. So if you spend exactly that amount, then you're impartial to either card. If you spend more than that amount, then the blue cash preferred makes more sense. And this is completely ignoring the other multipliers that come with that additional card and the other benefits. It's just focusing on that break-even point. The last thing for all of this is to only focus on covering bases that you actually need to cover. If you're someone who only eats at home due to dietary restrictions and you don't really go out to eat, then your restaurant spending is probably going to be pretty low. If you live downtown and you don't have a car, then you probably don't need to worry about that gas category. Tier two is going to be 5% back cards. This is the setup that I recommend for people who have lower spend. The US Bank Cash Plus card and the Chase Freedom Flex card are on the top of my list. The Cash Plus lets you pick two different categories where you're going to earn 5% back up to $2,000 per quarter. There's a lot of different categories, so there's a lot of play here. The two that I see people do is to pick obviously the ones that you spend a lot of money on consistently, electronics being a pretty easy one. And then the other one is to treat this as kind of a point forward, I guess in baseball or a lot of other sports, this would be your utility player. So when you think about your spend, it's going to be relatively flat throughout the year, but you might have different spikes. So maybe you don't spend too much on furniture normally, but you are renovating, or maybe you're buying a new pair of skis or a snowboard, or you're doing back to school shopping. Maybe the new Samsung phone just came out and you're looking to buy it, so you're going to have these spikes anyways, you might as well get 5% back. The Chase Freedom Flex is the other major card here, and this is due to the potential upside. So you're earning 5x back on up to $1,500 per quarter, and similar to the City Double Cash card that we started with, these points can be worth more if you put it into a system. If you're someone who might end up doing a travel system, that 5x back could easily represent 10% back in value. That does involve transfer partners and is a bit more advanced, but it's that potential upside, that optionality that plays a pretty big role. I've said this in a few videos, but if it's confusing to you or if you have a player two that always ends up using the wrong card, I'd recommend investing in a label maker. It takes you about 30 seconds every three months and it saves you a lot of brain cells. Or the anger and wrath of your player two. I think tier two is the sweet spot for most people who are lower or normal spenders who just wanna maximize their value. If you want to learn about either of these cards, we have links down below and also on our website, AskSebi.com. So moving into tier one, these are going to be specialty setups that make a lot of sense for some people, but they're going to be harder to justify. We'll quickly go through these, but you could probably make a dedicated video for each one of them. The first one is going to be the American Express trifecta, and you're going to be earning points, MR points, from the green, the gold, and also the blue business plus card, the BBP, and then cashing this out using the Schwab Platinum card for 1.25 cents per point. This means something like Forex back is going to be 5% cash in your brokerage. The main disadvantage of this is that you need to have pretty sizable spend for this setup to make sense. Along with this, there's also a bunch of annual fees. You're looking at about $800 to $950, depending on the setup that you're looking to run. You do end up getting a lot of credits to help you subsidize this, but some of them are based off travel. And if for someone purely focused on cash back, you might have a hard time using those credits. This is the setup that I recommend for people who have a lot of work spend or who can only take a week out every year for vacation and they can't use all their points anyways, so they have a lot left over, then you might as well cash this out into your brokerage. There are some of you who are business owners who run marketing agencies who probably spend 100K a month. The next one is going to be the Bank of America Platinum Honor Setup. The main disadvantage of the setup is that you need to have $100,000 with either Bank of America or Merrill Lynch. So yes, investment accounts do count for this, which makes it at least reasonable. So by choosing to have $100,000 of your investments with Merrill Lynch, you end up getting a 75% boost on your Bank of America cards. So the 3% back for the cash rewards card is really 5.25% cash back. 5.25% back on gas, online shopping, dining, travel, drug stores, and home improvement sounds pretty good. There are going to be spend caps involved per quarter, similar to the other rotating cards, but most people running this setup end up having multiple of these cards, or product change to have multiple of them. The last one is going to be the Chase Trifecta, and this is new for 2021, mostly due to the Pay Yourself Back program. This means that you can redeem your points for additional value, 25 or 50% boost for everyday purchases. 
So this sounds pretty good on the surface, but there's a bunch of disadvantages. Number one, we really don't know what this looks like moving forwards because Chase can change this for different categories. I think they'll keep the program around because it feels like a golden goose, but we don't know if it's going to stay as groceries. Number two is that you need a decent amount of spend and you probably want multiple freedoms or freedom flux cards for this to work effectively. Number three, similar to the American Express setup for that trifecta, you probably need to have a little bit of travel for this to work, whether it's renting cars if you don't want to put the mileage on your own car for a road trip, or doing something in order to take advantage of those credits. Just because tier one sounds like it has a lot of upside, it doesn't make sense for everyone. My question for you is which of these setups are you currently running, and which one do you want to run in the future? Let me know and everyone else know in the comments down below. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. It really helps us out. If you know anyone else who benefit, share this with them. It'll probably help them out. But otherwise, hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time.